Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Drop. And this is my first impressions look on Kyrie Irving's shoe. And he, of course, he signed with Anta, right? He had the whole falling out with Nike and Nike kind of dropped him. And then he signed with Anta, you know what I mean? And Anta is an amazing shoe company. They make really, really good performers, but with a great price. Not in this case though, we'll, we'll get to that. And then, uh, but also we have really good tech as well for the good price, which I, something that I loved about Anta. So if you guys do want to cop, I try to leave a link in the description box, the pro, right? So this is the regular version, right? This is the Shockwave 5. Right, and then we have the pro version, which is the actual shoe that Kyrie's been playing in. I don't really think he's played in a, a Shockwave 5 as much. He plays in the pro a lot more. Uh, but this shoe right now, right now on Famuji is going for 200 dollars freaking 200 bucks, which is really, really expensive. Um, and then we have the Shockwave 5, which is going for 110 bucks on their website, right? So uh, I don't know why there's such a big price difference, uh, like 90 bucks. Yeah, and I saw some colorways of the Pro going for like 210 bucks. But again, links will be in the description box. Let's get started right off with the Tracciones. So I actually did play in these. Uh, so I guess this is more like my first impressions slash first wear test kind of review, you know? Uh, but yeah, the traction pattern is pretty similar to the Shockwave 5. That's actually pretty much identical, but it's a little bit different here in the forefoot, right? So you can see like this, uh, there's a different pattern going on, right? There's almost like a different pod here in the forefoot for the regulars. The Pro doesn't really have that. It's just a, a collection of triangles that kind of like face each other, you know? Uh, so how does the traction feel? It feels really nice. You know, it feels very similar to the regular Shockwave 5. You know, on my wood floors and also when I was playing at LA Fitness with these the other day, uh, the traction was really good. You know, it had an amazing bite. It was picking up a little bit of dust just like the regular Shockwave 5, uh, but it, it wasn't anything terrible. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really seem like they changed the rubber compound up all too much. So that's good, of course, right? And also, as far as the durability goes, the durability feels like it's gonna be pretty good. You know, the rubber isn't super hard, however. It's kinda soft, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not super soft, but it's kinda soft, but there are a lot of grooves and also, uh, the grooves seem pretty deep. So I feel like it'll be pretty good for outdoor use. Uh, so yeah, the traction feels like it'll be very, very good, just like in the regular Shockwave 5. Now moving on to the heel to toe transition, pretty much the exact same, but it feels a little bit different and also a little bit better here in the heel um, because I actually don't know why. I feel like maybe this plastic, right, is a little bit softer, right? When I'm Pressing with my finger, there's a little bit more give here in the Pro versus this. This is a lot stiffer of a plastic here in the regular Shockwave 5, so it feels a little bit more kind of like stiff here in the heel, uh, but we still have a nice curve shape in both of the shoes, right? So it's not super uh, different or anything like that. It's just a little bit stiffer in the 5, and then here in the 4 foot, we have a very nice curve shape and a lot and a lot of, look at that. It's just super duper flexible. Right, look, look uh, comparing it to the Shockwave 5, which is a little bit more stiff, but still very, very flexible, which I do like. And which is also very, very different from uh, Nike Kyrie's. And Nike Kyrie's were usually a lot stiffer here in the forefoot because uh, they added the uh, zoom strobe unit in the forefoot, which makes it a little bit stiffer, you know what I mean? Or I guess for later models. So it feels very smooth and very similar to the regular Shockwave 5 for the heel to toe transition. Also, uh, I forgot to mention, we have a, a little bit of an outto curvature, right? You guys can see the rubber comes up a little bit here on the medial side, wrapping up. So we have better grip when we're doing these types of movements, you know, when you're doing crossovers and stuff like that. And also we have a little bit of a rounded shape as well, uh, very similar to the regular Shockwave 5, which I really like, right? Obviously it's not as much, or it's definitely not as much as the uh, outsole curvature found in Nike Kyrie's, you know, especially comparing it to the two, three, and four, and also comparing it to the uh, more flatter five, six, and seven, you know? Uh, but it's still nice to have a little bit of a curve there and also the, the rubber coming up or wrapping up on the medial side, right? And now moving on to the cushioning setup, it's pretty much the exact same <laughs> you know what i mean we have a full length nitrogen uh midsole you know what i mean we can see it looks pretty similar to boost and it's very very similar in both of these shoes as well i guess there is a different type of caging on the medial side and also on the lateral side but pretty much it's the exact same we have this plastic we have a carbon fiber as well right and also carbon fiber midfoot chain plate for both of the shoes but we have carbon fiber here on the side for the pro and then we don't have carbon fiber it's just TPU is just plastic for the regular Shockwave 5. Uh, but how does the cushion feel? It feels very, very similar. But like I said, in the heel to toe transition, because of this plastic, it feels a little bit stiffer. There's not as, or actually there's very 
very little compression from the actual missile in the regular Shockwave 5. The Pro feels a little bit softer, just a tiny bit, but it's not that much different. Also, the Pro feels a little bit better for the, uh, the step and comfort, right? Under for cushioning. Also, another interesting thing is the insole comes with kind of like this plastic, it kind of wraps around the heel and goes into the midfoot. Uh, which is, I've never seen this, right? Uh, so I guess that'll be good for, uh, a little bit better for torsion support, I guess. And also, uh, underneath that, we have this super duper soft mesh trouble board, right? So the step and comfort is really, really nice. You can feel the nit nitrogen foam pretty much right underneath your foot. And comparing that to the Shockwave 5, the Shockwave 5 is still really nice for step and comfort, right? Uh, but we do have a regular or kind of like more traditional looking uh, strobe board, right? But it's still really nice. You know, you have a good amount of compression. You can still feel the soft nitrogen foam underneath your foot. So um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit softer for the Pro, but not by much, right? So pretty much it's the exact same foam besides, I guess, the uh, there's a little bit more compression from the actual midsole and also the step and cover is a little bit better for the pro but is that worth the 90 to 100 dollars price difference no not really right and now moving on to the upper so the upper is also pretty different right so we have this kind of like textile and then here in the toe box we have another kind of like material with triangles on it right and also another thing that's different is i guess if you do toe drags right this is plastic you know uh and then if in the regular shockwave 5 it's, it's rubber Right? But I guess it's, it's really good for durability if you do toe drags. Uh, but yeah, it's super duper thin. It's also very, very supportive. It conforms to your foot very well. Actually, it feels really nice for quality. It doesn't feel cheap really at all. Uh, the Shockwave 5 feels a little bit cheaper because yeah, the, the fuse and also like the screen mesh is just not as good quality, right? But feels just as thin, feels just as nice on foot. Really couldn't tell the difference, right? Uh, and also it says Shockwave 5 Pro, which is pretty cool. Right? It says Shockwave 5 Pro right here. And then here in the midfoot area, we have also like a textile material, but it's very, very glued down. It's super thin though. You can literally see through it. You can see my finger through it, right? So it's a very, very thin material. We also have the Anta logo right here. And uh, same thing with the regular Shockwave 5. And then uh, I guess the heel is a little bit different in design as well, right? We kind of have these like triangle shapes. It kind of reminds me of like a D-pad uh, on like, you know, controllers. And then here in the regular Shockwave 5, it's just like, this synthetic material, you know? And then for the tongue, we have like an average amount of padding, right? But another interesting thing though, is that the regular Shockwave 5 has better lining material. It's kind of like embroidered a little bit and feels a little bit nicer for quality uh, as opposed to the regular Shockwave 5, which is just like a nylon material, right? Uh, they're both half booty construction tongues, right? And also uh, another thing that I like about the Shockwave 5 is that there's like flywire cables, uh, you know, kind of connected to the eyelet and it also goes underneath the upper. You know what I mean? The Shockwave 5 Pro doesn't really have anything like that. You know what I mean? So it's like the Shockwave 5 has a little bit more tech, you know, in, in the upper it feels like, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, there is the tongue there. And also here in the ankle area, we have a very, very thick plush, kind of like uh, Achilles pads here for the regular Shockwave 5, right? That feels super plush. And then the 5 Pro actually feels a little bit less padded. We have, a, I guess, like a singular pad, uh, but it's not as like, thick, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not as thick as uh, the regular Shockwave 5, which is pretty interesting, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know, the, the, the Shockwave 5 is like a thick with three Cs, and then the Shockwave 5 Pro is thick with two Cs, right? So honestly, I guess the material quality, uh, I guess uh, for the toe box and midfoot mid foot area, the Pro is a little bit better, but the, for the lining and also the padding here in the ankle area, I like the Shockwave 5 a little bit better, you know? So there's the upper there, moving on to the fit. So I went true to size for both of the shoes and they both fit me like a glove. They, they fit my foot perfectly, right? So uh, lengthwise, my toes go very close to the edge of the shoe, which I like. Also here in the toe box is really, really snug, right? Same thing with the regular Shockwave 5. Uh, so that feels great. And also width wise, it's slightly narrow, right? Which is perfect. I, I have a slightly narrow foot. It's not like super wide. It's not super narrow and fits my foot perfectly here in the toe box. And also here in the midfoot, it, it does get a little bit skinnier and a little bit more narrow here in the midfoot as well. Uh, but yeah, they both fit very, very similar, like pretty much the exact same for the fit. So if you want a snug fit, then, then go true to size for both of the shoes. If you have a wide foot, probably go up a half size to maybe even the full size, right? Uh, and now moving on to the supporting lockdown, I mean, here in the Shockwave 5, I was good to go, right? As far as the lateral containment, you can see all this synthetic and also plastic here in the forefoot, here in the midfoot. Like in the heel, we have a little bit of the, the plastic coming up and also there seems to be an internal TPU heel counter. Same thing with the uh, Pro, right? We have this plastic coming up acting as a sidewall. It also cages the cushion. And then um, I don't know why, I don't know what this, carbon fiber does, you know what I mean? They put it 
to, I guess, cage the cushion, but it doesn't really need to be carbon fiber, you know what I mean? I feel like that's a little bit wasted there. Uh, and then here in the heel, we can see pretty much the same exact kind of caging as a regular Shockwave 5, right? And it comes up acting as a sidewall, and then there's an internal TPU heel counter. And then also, it's a very, very wide shoe. We can see a very wide outrigger. It's very sharp as well. And comparing that to the regular Shockwave 5, probably around the same width, you know what I mean? Yeah, pretty much the exact same width here in the forefoot and also here in the heel. So uh, yeah, lateral stability feels like it's gonna be good. There's, there doesn't seem to be any uh, issue right now with heel slippage or anything like that. So supporting lockdown feels very good for the Shockwave 5 Pro as it was here in the regular Shockwaves, right? Um, so let's check the weight. I feel like the 5 Pro is, uh, feels a little bit lighter, just a tiny bit, right? 12.85 for the regular Shockwaves. And then the Shockwave 5 Pro is 12.05. So it is lighter, right? It's, it's actually a good amount lighter. It feels a little bit lighter as well on foot. Um, but I, I, I don't really think you'll notice it all too much. You know what I mean? Because they both feel very similar. Like the upper feels very similar. The traction feels uh, very good as well. And then the cushion is low to the ground for both of the shoes too. So uh, it just feels just a tiny bit lighter for the Shockwave 5 Pro. And that's pretty much it, you know? Neither of these shoes are bulky or anything like that, right? And now moving on to the aesthetics. I definitely like the Shockwave 5 Pro a little bit better. You know, uh, there's just, just a couple of subtle differences, right? Uh, just looks a little bit more, I guess, like high quality, right? It looks a little bit more expensive as well. I do like the details in the Shockwave 5 Pro a little bit better as well, as opposed to the regular 5, right? So tell us what you guys think looks better down in the comment section below. So wrapping things up, yeah, the Shockwave 5 Pro does not feel any different than the Shockwave 5. And I don't know why it's like so much more expensive. Maybe it's because it's Famuji, um, but yeah. It just feels a little bit lighter, right? And also the cushion, like I said, there's a little bit more compression and the stepping cover is just a tiny bit better. But um, that's about it, nothing else. The traction is pretty much the same. Uh, court feels pretty much the same. The, the overall feeling of the upper is pretty much the same. Support feels great. Uh, I guess it's also a little bit lighter but not by much, right? On foot, they both feel very, very similar, right? So if you want the better quality shoe, right? Then get the Shockwave 5 Pro, but it feels like it'll play pretty much the exact same as the regular Shockwave 5. So there's my first impressions look on the Shockwave 5 Pro. Again, if you guys do want to cop, I try to leave a link in the description box, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.